Today's episode of DRL is brought to you by Hella Cocktail Company. My guests don't just come to DRL for me. They also come for the cocktails. Luckily, my friends at Hella Cocktail Company have my back. These guys make amazing mixes from Bloody Mary to Margarita to Moscow Mule. They also make cocktail bitters, my secret ingredient, and now yours too. It's easy to feel like the best bartender in town when every bottle comes with a simple recipe on it. Hella Cocktail Company, bold flavor, real ingredients, hospitality. Mixing it up since 2011. Shop the collection on Amazon Prime or use code DRL online at hellacocktail.co for free shipping. Hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL, where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. I'm your host, Tanisha Wood. So tonight I have Haley with me. Hey, Haley. Hi, guys. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm yeah? excited to be here. Are you dating here in Dallas? Personally, I usually don't like dating. It's not fun for me, but um, I recognize that I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life, and I have to make myself accessible. Um, I'm not personally seeking or like trying to find a guy right now, but it would be nice if he found me. I hate the getting to know someone stages of dating. Like, I don't like feeling like guys are trying to impress me. And I feel like that's what the first date always is. It's like, um, so what's your five-year plan? And where do you see yourself? And like, things like that. And I'm like, I prefer like energies and just naturally happen. That's how all my exes, they, all my exes basically tricked me into dating them. Because um, it was just so natural. And then one day I was like, oh, you know. Let's this do nice. this. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm older now. And so that's not how the world works anymore. So I have to like, honestly, me and one of my friends, we went on a vacation um, we made a SWOT analysis of my dating life, and y'all really did a SWOT analysis in Costa Rica. On <laughs> what the is Black this Sand marketing? <laughs> <laughs> like a marketing experiment? Seriously, and um, yeah, so that was one of my opportunities is to stop canceling dates. Well, first, stop curving everyone. Mm-hmm. If I allow someone to take me on a date, don't cancel it and actually go. And Are so, you that person that cancels day off? Um, day before, sometimes day of. I'm better now. I, I haven't canceled a date in a while. What were your strengths? Um, that I'm very confident, you know, I do know what, I know what I don't want. Um, and I also, you know, I have an idea of what I want. Um, so those are my, those are my strengths in dating. Um, girl, you did a SWOT analysis for dating. Of course, people are going to ask you about your five year plan. (laughs) I know, but I just, I I prefer like, if I can have fun with you, take me out like for drinks, take me out to a day party. Can we like dance? Can we have fun? See, I like a dinner type first date because here's what I think can happen if we go to like a day party or something where there's a lot of stuff around and a lot of people around that could easily mask right yeah so like but if we're just sitting down just you and me like I'm seeing you I'm talking to you I'm hearing you like I get it I get who you are for the better for the worse like if it's for me or if not like I get it like because I have to be able to sit in a room with you. If we're together, like I have to be able to just be yeah. able to sit in a room with you without anything else going on. Absolutely. And I completely agree. But I feel like in my experience, the majority of the first dates that I've gone on that have been in a dinner setting have been interview and very like it's hard to get uh, chemistry. It's awkward. They're you know trying to impress me. They're nervous. I'm honestly like I'm not interested in the first date. It's like I have to get your energy. Well, I'm interested because I I agreed to go. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just hard to get past that initial awkwardness. And I I just hate that part of it. Like, I want to know who you are. Stop trying to impress me. What can you sustain? Like, what personality traits are you trying to project to make me think that you're the greatest guy in the world? Get rid of all that. Like, just be who you are. Like, what's your humor like? Do Mm -hmm. you laugh at fart jokes? I don't know. Like, I just want to know who you are underneath the I want you to like me and I feel like for dinner dates that's what I get most of the time I want to see who you are in different settings like can we I just want to see the personality that you can sustain I want to see the you know you take me on dates that you can sustain don't take me to (laughs) Capitol Grill on the first date and if I want to go there you know once a week then you can't sustain it like I I don't need don't put on a front for something that you can't actually keep up at all like honestly one of my first dates was to wing stop and that was like i love wings <laughs> and he listened um when we were text in the text stage like i freaking love wings and i was like this is great you know see that this is what i always tell the men that listen to the show i say it's not about like how much money you're spending or anything like that it's really like if you're listening 
So if a girl is like, I like wings, and you're like, hey, I took you to this wing spot because you said you like wings, the message there isn't, I didn't have enough money to take you somewhere. The message is, I listened to you. Exactly. And that's what everybody wants. Exactly. And this is proof, and I say it all the time, and I just like having proof because I like being able to say I'm right. (laughs) (laughs) So when was your last date? Um, Okay, so I went on, actually it was like a third date a couple weeks ago, Mm -hmm. about three weeks ago. But that was my last date. How did you guys meet and what did you do? Okay. Okay. So this is really weird. Okay. So I have um, like a Tinder profile. It literally says I swipe when I'm bored because that's what I <laughs> That's what your whole profile yeah, says? Yeah. So I swipe That's horrible. I know. But because <laughs> I prefer to meet people, you know, organically, but I don't go anywhere. So. So anyways, I have a Tinder profile. He said that. He swiped right, and I never got to it because I wasn't bored that week, I guess. <laughs> um, and so he found me. I don't know how, but he found me on Facebook. After that, I showed up on his people you may know just randomly. And so I believe it. Yeah. And so, you know, the feds be watching. Yeah. But he added me, and I accepted him, but I didn't really know him. We had friends in common, so I was like, okay, whatever. He messaged me, and I... He messaged me before I accepted it, so I saw the message, but he couldn't see I saw the message. And it was really respectful. It was like, hey, you know, I found your profile on Tinder. You never swipe right, so, you know, I don't believe in missed opportunities. You know, that's blah, how blah, I blah. met my boyfriend. And so, yeah, that's awesome. And I was like, you know, that's respectful, but I, w- I think I was doing homework, so I was like, I'm not going to respond. And then I forgot to respond. And then, like, well, I wasn't going to respond anyway. <laughs> you were you were not going to respond. I was period. not going to respond. You weren't attracted. Um, I thought he was you know attractive. I didn't I didn't like the way he dressed, but I was shallow. But that wasn't the, why I wasn't going to. You can always change that. That's what I tell people. Like, don't really? the dress thing is so like. I just feel like I could change a man's whole style in one trip. <laughs> like, but the thing is, is like. I don't want to change. I don't know. Maybe if we end up getting together, he would have wanted to change the way he dressed. But I don't know. I just men take really well to like being critiqued about their fashion, Uh, unless they're like a fashion diva. And if you're a fashion diva like that, you're probably not for me because I don't really like men who try to take up too much of the spotlight. Yeah, like in that way. Anyway, Um, but yeah, men are usually pretty receptive. If you're like, hey, I like this shirt, you should get it. But that takes a while to get to that point. And it takes, like, I'm usually no longer interested. Okay, so I didn't respond to the Facebook message. A week later, he emails me because my email is connected to my Facebook. <laughs> he emails me and it's like, hey, third time's a charm. He really I, doesn't believe in missed opportunities. Yeah, he's like, you know, you really intrigued me. Um, I don't know, some more very respectful, um, very courteous um, verbiage and I was like okay he's really persistent he's very respectful I'll respond because he asked to take me out um, so I was like you know I can go out on this day and we set it up um, and then we actually did go on a date and he was cool um, I think I was in my head a little bit because I'm like mm, I really didn't want to go I wanted to cancel but I didn't because you know the whole SWAT analysis <laughs> Um, but we went and it was very nice. And so he uh, immediately set up a second date and I was like, you know, that's cool. And he set up another, it, well, the first day was a dinner date. Mm-hmm. Actually all three days were dinner dates. And so at that point I was just like, mm. but anyways, he was very nice. He traveled. That was your fault. It, it might have been. Cause on it, date one, if you did a dinner and you were thinking, okay, date two, we did a dinner already. Great. I don't want to do that. You should, why didn't you say, Hey, you know where we could maybe go to the park or you know, insert event. I definitely could have. So that was that was on you. I'm not I, even blaming him. I that definitely him. could have, but I don't know. His lack of creativity was unattractive. But it, he might have thought you liked that. Yeah. But beyond that, there just like was no chemistry. And chemistry energy is so it's like paramount to me. Like that's so important. Like he was so nice. You know, he was well put together. He had a great career. He was respectful. He had a relationship with God. You know, he was very close with his family, all the things that, you know, would be attractive in my ideal guy. But there was just no chemistry between us. And, you know, he was very interested in eventually. Um, well, what happened is after our third date, my grandmother actually passed. So I kind of retreated. Oh, no. um, and he Sorry was, to hear that. No, it's okay. You know, that's okay. But he was very, you know, just checking in on me, making sure I was okay. And I was like, um, and I like this guy. Yeah, he was <laughs> awesome. Like, he's a really good guy. Um, there was just no chemistry. And so he asked me, he said, um, hey, um, I know that you are going through a bit right, uh, a lot right now, but I just wanted to know um, 
if you wanted to go out on another date with me. And I, I just told him, you know, to be honest, I think you're a really great guy, but I don't think we should pursue any anything romantic at this time. And he was like, you know, thanks for being honest. And that so, was that was mature, the yeah, way it all went down. Yeah, so, and that's how it goes most of the time. It's just like, if I don't feel the spark, I'm gone. Now, why did you go on a, a third date um, if you didn't feel it by the second? Because I was like, am I being... Am, in my mind, I was like, am I being shallow? Do I not like him because of the way he dresses? Like, what? what is it? Because he's a very nice guy. You know, he's attractive. Um, some other women would be ecstatic to go on, out with mm-hmm. him and to have his interests. So I was like, you know, is it me? Because I, I realized, you know, I'm pretty difficult. Um, but you can't account for chemistry. Yeah. Like, p- paper's great, like what you see on paper, but... Like you can't account for chemistry and there's no way to really define it. Like you can't, there's no magic formula. You'd be like, well, if he has this, 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 and this, and you mix it all together, it equals chemistry. Like, no, it's just like, yeah, it's not as, and it's so important because for me, I really enjoy being alone. I really enjoy my personal time. I've been single for three years before that I was practically, you know, about to get engaged. So, um, God had given me what, you know, I'm spiritual, but God had given me exactly what I asked for in my ex-boyfriend. This was um, the one you were almost engaged to? Right. How long were you with him? We were together for three years. I was going to move to Houston. I had the job down there. Like, he had purchased a home. We had picked it. He purchased it, but we had picked it out together. My family had traveled. He's from Ivory Coast, um, so I had traveled back to Ivory Coast to meet his family. Like, we were there. Um, and then a month before I was set to graduate from college and move down there, he had like cold feet and that scared me to death because I was just like, you know, I don't know anyone in Houston. I'm- so you guys were engaged? No, we were not engaged. OK, um, I was going I was going to move down there to be in the home that we had picked out. together. Wow. Um, had the job set up. Um, so we were going to, you know, start our life together. We had been ring. We had been to look at some rings. So we were there. Um, and then a, it was a month before I was about to move and he got cold feet. And I was like, you know, I appreciate you for telling me. Now. What did he say? Um, he was just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think you should move down here. Oh yeah. Can you imagine like my security was gone? I was like, I don't know anyone down there. I don't have any family in Texas. And I was like, you know, I really appreciate you for telling me now before I got down there. And of course, you know, within a couple of weeks I had an offer in Dallas. Um, they were going to move me out. So it was like perfect time and everything worked out. Um, I'm glad you didn't marry him. I mean, I don't know this guy <laughs> and he, could be amazing, whatever. Like, that's not why. I don't think anybody should be married before 30. Really? Just as a general life rule, when somebody at, like, 25 is like, I'm getting married, I'm like, no, girl, no! No, please! Because there's just so much that changes between 25 and 30 that, like, you just could be a completely different person. You know, they say like all the cells in your body change like every seven years. So you could potentially be a whole nother person. And that's like going like transitioning into that whole transition into like full adulthood and like, Oh man, being tied down like for real, for real at 25. Oh God. Yeah, (laughs) I was like, honestly, like he's, he's amazing. Like we're still friends. Um, but I'm a completely different person than I was at 24. I've learned so much about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, gotten out of a relationship and then straight into a relationship with him. So now I hadn't been by myself for a while. So I, I knew who I was in a relationship and with this guy. And I knew who I was in a relationship with this guy. But me being myself alone, like learning to exist alone and be like, you know, God forbid, if I end up alone, can I live with myself? Right. Like, and I feel like a lot of people cannot say that. Like there are some people who just hate being alone so they're in relationship after relationship and it's not even about the person it's just about their their fear of spending any time alone and like being alone and what that might look like exactly and then they're never in a good relationship because it's like you You are with you yes why would anybody else exactly yeah so what have you learned in the three years of being single that you didn't know before that i am extremely picky um and I think that's okay. Um, I do. I know what I don't want um, more than what I do want. Um, what else have I learned? You should learn more what you do want. You know why? Why? Because I believe that the universe hears like the the don'ts, mm-hmm. and then that they don't, they don't hear the don't or the no. They just hear that thing. You think that so it's like I don't want 
a short man and all the universe here is a short man, short man, short man. <laughs> so you have to tell the, you know, what's funny. Not is, that that matters. Yeah. Well, you're kind of tall though. So I, I I'm just making the assumption yeah. that that, that would be <laughs> something that you'd be like, I don't want cause I'm tall and I like to wear heels. And you know, one of the guys that I have dated in Dallas who actually made it past, like I say like within two weeks, if you're still, if I'm still responding to your messages, then you know, you've made it past. Um, but yeah, one of the guys that I've dated, he was five seven, and how tall are you? I'm five ten. Okay, so I'm about six three in heels, and um, he he was. I feel like short men are more confident. Like, do you feel like th- that way? Um, you know, I've dated my fair share share of um of like <laughs> five five men. I'm five five. Okay, and so yeah, I have I've had two serious relationships with um shorter men. And I, I think it's fine. Like, I don't, it's not a big deal to me, but I'm also not that tall. Yeah. Um, I might feel differently if I were tall, but my mom once said something to me and sometimes she says stuff and it sticks in my head and I can never get it out. And then I'm just like, why well, did you say that? Cause now I can never. Okay. So she's Jamaican. And so she always is like, you ever notice all the CEO of them, they tall. <laughs> all the president, they tall. And so in her mind, she's like, all successful men are tall. And I'm like, mom, that's not true. It's just not true. It's not. But you know, like, but in my mind, I'm like, I don't know man. if he ever going to be CEO because, uh, <laughs> well, I definitely prefer taller men. Like my sweet spot is six, four. I feel like if you go updated guys over six, seven, and I feel like then it's just like awkward. Well, and, and they're also bat shit crazy. I don't know. If I've I'm, never dated a guy really, that tall. Yeah. So I feel like, um, they expect to be, catered to they expect to be pursued <laughs> and I'm just not that way like and women fawn over men that are like really really tall I'm just men, like, tall men get too much credit just for being tall like, you haven't done anything like they'll literally cancel out every other fault because he's tall do you like him or is he just tall right. like <laughs> yeah so no I like my sweet spot is six four because you're no you're still taller than me when I have on my heels and every girl likes that so what happened with the short guy you said it was a pretty good first yeah, couple good dates. It was really, um, it was really good. We actually decided to date exclusively, um, and then that's when the little men syndrome came out, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh no, no!" And so it's like everything was fine, and then he's like, "We're gonna date exclusively." He's like, "Oh, you shouldn't wear anything that you wouldn't wear to church ever." I'm like, "Uh, sir." Like what? what? What were you wearing when you met him? Yeah, exactly. And so I don't even remember what I was wearing, but I'm like, I'm not going to not wear what I want to wear because all of a sudden. Like in what context it. did he say that? Like, did y'all just get up in the morning? No. Were you dra- getting dressed to go somewhere? Like so, who, who, how does one just come out and say yeah. that comfortably? Yeah, seriously. So I was, this is the night that he said that I had went out to celebrate one of my friend's birthday. Um, she went to one of the clubs here, and so I was wearing club attire. I had it was actually a midi length skirt. It was bodycon midi length skirt and a matching crop top that um, was it didn't have sleeves, mm-hmm. um, and that was it. Like it was, I have the picture posted on my Instagram still because I look damn good in it, <laughs> um, and I look respectful. I don't think I dress, you know, too revealing or anything like that. But he just thought it was too revealing and. I was just like, you know, if you're not comfortable, then, you know, that's a personal problem. And I'm not going to, you know, this is who I was when you met me. This is who yeah. I was when we've been dating all this time. So all of a sudden, because we said the word exclusive. And like when I see a red flag, I'm out of it. Run. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I've been stupid before. I've ignored, like, no, I am, I'm gone. Bye. You know what people do? They'll see a red flag and they'll be like, is that a red flag? Mm-hmm. No, I think it's pink yeah no it actually looks like a magenta you know if you look in the light it's actually white like, <laughs> yeah, like, like no I, it is a red run. flag run yeah i've learned lessons the hard way before <laughs> like what flags did you ignore in the past um one of my exes like he he was one of the people who just hated being alone and so we were kind of long distance i um was at purdue at the time and he was an hour away in indianapolis at university of indianapolis um, and he just couldn't be alone. And then I went down one time and I saw him, you know, closer to a girl than he should be because we were actually together. And so we talked about it and he was like, no. What know, do you mean closer? Like what was happening? Like, you know, just something that you feel uncomfortable. Like, I don't know this girl. And like, you're like, she's 
leaning all over you. She seems too comfortable. Yeah, she seems too. It's like you guys didn't just meet like in, you know, something's going on. Mm -hmm. And so that, he was very friend, overly friendly. I don't mind guys that are friendly. Um, but he was, he lied about it. Like he hid the context and he would not introduce me to these girls. And so I was like, those are red flags. I'm like, you know, but I should, I should be able to trust him. You know, this is what he said. Um, it's happening. So why I shouldn't have a reason to think anything else. Well, he was doing everybody over Indianapolis. How did you find out? Um, Indiana is small. And so we were both in Greek organizations. So that community is even smaller in a state like Indiana. So it came out. Damn. Yeah. And then everybody knew because it's so small, like word spreads very quickly. But, you know, it is what it is. Damn. Mm -hmm. I learned that. Okay. the, The biggest one I think for me was I was seeing this guy. This was when I like very first moved to New York. I've told this story about a thousand times on this podcast, but y'all going to hear it again because I learned so much from this. So I was seeing this guy and like, I just was so enamored with him and I had never, I don't think been that enamored. Like I had liked people, but in my mind I was like, he's just so funny and he's so tall and he's so, and like everything in me was just like, Oh, and then, um, it was like, I was used to guys being very like, yeah, we're going out on Friday. I'll see you then. You know, like just very communicative. And because I think that's what I've always sort of like displayed that I expected. And for some reason, like he just wasn't getting on board. And I'd be like, we were supposed to hang out Friday. Like you never text me. What happened? Oh, like some stuff happened. And normally I would have just been like, uh, well, bye Felicia. (laughs) And like, why would I even talk to you? Right. But I was again, so enamored that I was just like, yeah, stuff, I guess, you know, stuff happens. What are you going to do? And it went on and on and it went on for a very long time. And like, he never wanted to commit. And I, I should have like, I knew that, like, it wasn't even a surprise is the thing. Like at the end of the day, I wasn't like, what you don't want. It's like, "Mm, you have not been wanting to that for for months, like going on a year. So like, why am I even acting surprised at this point? But I think what I thought in that moment was that somehow the power of me and my magic, whatever he didn't feel for me, I was going to shift in that time. And that's the thing. You can't do that. If somebody doesn't feel it for you and they don't treat you how you need to be treated right away, let it go. And yeah, there are some like things that you have to teach people. There are some things that people just aren't naturally going to know. Like what I was saying with the dinner thing, like maybe he didn't know you liked, you know what I'm saying? But that's not atrocious. So there's certainly some things where it's like, yeah, I got to tell you this. I got to teach you this. But you could tell when somebody's just not pursuing you in the way that you should be pursued. And like nothing that you could do or say is going to shift that person's mindset towards you. So it's like when somebody shows those signs, like, like my mom said, a man should always love you more than you love him. I, I have heard that and I believe it. It's so true. Again, one of the things that my mom said mm-hmm. that I just can't get out of my head. So now I'm like, I need a tall man that's obsessed with me. <laughs> yeah. I will accept no less than your obsession. No, but I feel like you got to be careful with that, though, too, because the ex that I saw him, I was his everything. And that's a lot of pressure to have. Like when we were good before he had the cold feet, I was like, and even still, like if I said I wanted to get married, like he would say, okay. Um, But like I was, it was so, so much pressure being his everything. Like I was his mom and he needed me to approve every decision. And that's when I learned, like, I need a leader. Like I need a head of household, you know, but yeah, that's, that's a lot of pressure when you're, when someone's obsessed with you and you're their everything. So gotta be careful. You gotta, you know, nice balance. Well, I Okay, obsessed with me, but I'm not their everything, right? right? So when I say obsessed with me, like when you wake up in the morning, I want you to be like, okay. what What does Tanisha need right now? But like, yeah, I still need you to have other support system around yeah. you and like friends. And That's like, so I, can, important I can't me. be your only friend. Yeah. Like, I can't be like, I want to be everything to you, but I don't want to have to be. Yeah. So, so eventually I will turn into your mother and your sister and your friend and your career coach and everything else. But by choice, not because I have to fill Definitely. that role. Definitely. And I just feel like, you know, well, with him, he didn't have any other friends. He wasn't very close with his family. Um, And so I I was that. So I learned through that relationship is that you got to have your own thing Mm -hmm. because I have my own things and I'm an introvert. Sometimes I need my me time. And that doesn't mean I'm mad at you. 
Um, I just need you to be okay with doing you so that I can do me and then we can come together and do us. And like we're living in perfect harmony. Um, but yeah, definitely have to have your own thing in your own life and your own friends, you know, that can become our friends, but you know, just have, have something for yourself. Our last year together, um, he actually had already moved to Houston because he graduated a year prior to me. So we were long distance for a while. We saw each other. Um, he would either come to Indiana where I would go to Houston, maybe like once every other month. Um, but we started to grow distant during that time. Um, I felt it because we went from seeing each other every single day um, to once every other month. But we talked every day. We Skyped. Um, but I think, you know, all of that is like a synergistic effect where it all just played into the cold feet. Even though, you know, in my mind, I was still all in. I thought we were... I thought we were good, even though we were distant, like, you know, I'm going to Houston, we're going to be back, back in our rhythm. Um, and he got the cold feet. Did you really want to get married at that I, point? I did want to be with him. Like, he was my everything. Like, even though, like, we had our, he wasn't my everything. He was very important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, my family loved him. I, I really loved him. And I still do, you know, have love for him. Um, I would have said yes before the cold feet. You know, he is a great guy. Any woman would be blessed to have him in in her life. Um, but there were some key things that I know now that I need or that, you know, I desire in my partnership. Um, well, first, you know, me and him don't share the same religion. And I didn't realize. What is, what is he? Um, he's Muslim he? and I'm Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't realize how important it was to me that we shared a faith because my faith wasn't so strong when we first got together. Um, but towards the end of, end of our relationship, I had started, you know, I wanted, this is when I honestly kind of knew this is after I had moved to Texas um, we, during that month that we were still kind of together. I went and I bought this like huge like woman's devotion Bible. It was like $50. He's like, why are you buying that? Like, that's $50. You could just use the app on your phone if you really want to read it. And I was like, it's my devotion Bible. I'm trying to get <laughs> closer to God. And so at that point, I was just like, you know. I didn't realize how important it was to me to have someone that I can pray with. Like, he would make comments. And these are red flags that I didn't realize were red flags, or maybe I should have. But he would say something like, when we have kids, like, I want to raise my son as Muslim. You can raise our a daughter however you want. What kind of sense does that make? Yeah. <laughs> and I just played it off as, like, ha, ha, joke. But I'm like, mm, so are you? You're like, he really means that. Yeah, so I'm just like, you know, it's really important to me that, I have a man of God and I have like a leader, um, someone who can make decisions um, because I'm a Libra and I'm indecisive. I could, I make decisions, but honestly, I need some, I need a guy who can make a firm decision that I can trust is in, you know, our best interest. Um, And that's, that's just what I want. And he's about to be making random decisions. You do this on this half of the house. I'm going to do this on this (laughs) half of the house. Like what? Yeah. You know, he wouldn't even have made it. That's the only decision that he would have ever made because everything else is, what do you think? We'll do whatever you want. Was he a very devoted Muslim or was he sort of? No, he wasn't. He was, this is how I was raised. So, I mean, he didn't pray five times a day or anything like that. Um, I asked him to teach me about his religion because I, you know, I wanted to learn more, and he couldn't even tell me very much. Um, so, so how was he going to raise a kid, not knowing a thing is his your damn self? Is as good as mine, but I was like, no, no. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was completely, it was interesting, but I learned so much um, about myself and about what I did not want through that relationship because he was, he was everything that I had prayed to God for. Um, and I thought I was being very specific in what I wanted. Um, so what don't you want? I don't want someone who leaves all the decisions to me. Um, I don't want someone who doesn't have a relationship with their family. I don't want someone who doesn't have a relationship with God. Um, I don't want someone who doesn't have their own things. I you know, I don't want someone who is, who can't handle all that I come with. And that's, you know, my confidence, um, the things that I have going for myself as far as like my ambitions with entrepreneurship or business or school, anything. Um, and also like, I didn't realize that it was a thing until I guess social media is kind of a, a big thing. That was like with the, the short guy, 
I, th- I think that's what. See, you do know all the things you want because all the things you said, you just turn those around to here's what I do want. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. But I think I'm still working on the specific list. But I think I'm enjoying being alone. I enjoy being alone so much that I haven't made it a priority to actually like, you know, they say write it down. Mm-hmm. I, haven't, I haven't made it a priority to write it down. Um, and I, I should. Um, did you, do you believe in that? I mean, I met my boyfriend through sort of a divine letter that I wrote to the universe, um, which I had never done before, but I had a woman on the show who said that she had written her boyfriend a letter. That episode never aired. (laughs) There was some, well, you guys know how it went between season two, no season one and season two, but I won't get into all that, but there was some legal stuff. But anyway, that episode never aired, but she talked about the fact that, um, her before she met her fiance now as her fiance she'd just written a letter and she said that for the first time the letter wasn't about you know a six foot six figure or six pack it was about how she truly wanted somebody to make her feel and so that night it was like I had at that point I had like left my corporate job I was like deciding what I wanted to do next I was about to go travel the world like I was just sort of all over the place but for some reason that night like right after our interview I was like I'm just gonna write a letter And I wrote a letter, like I emailed it to myself and then I never thought about it again. Like I literally just was like, okay, cool. And I wrote it almost like as like an assignment to do for myself. Like, okay, great. Wrote it. And, um, it was very specific though. Like it was super specific. It said things like your stomach's going to hurt because all you guys do is laugh. Like he is going to love Drake lyrics the same way you do. So like weird things like that. And so I thought nothing of it. Fast forward. Then, um, when I met my boyfriend, eventually, like we were having a nine hour conversation, like before we even went on a date and we we're having this conversation and I, he, he says all these things. Like, he's like, you know what I just love about you? Like, how do you have a Drake lyric for everything? And then we start like <laughs> rapping Drake and then like oh, so literally cool. spent like eight of the nine hours just like laughing. And so I was like, oh my God, like this is crazy. And then I was like, yo, I'm really freaked out. He's like, well, what's up? I'm like, I can't tell you, but I'm really (laughs) freaked out. He's like, you have to tell me. I'm like, okay. So I wrote this letter and like, this is before I'd even met you, but I wrote this letter and I was just like sort of telling the universe that I was, I was essentially congratulating myself on already having, already having this person. And, um, it actually turns out I wrote it on his birthday. Wow. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. And, um, and he was like, well, read it to me. And I was like, I can't, this is very personal. And like this I, is like before you guys went on a, a date. We went, we, at this point we had met once like okay. in person, but, um, no, we, we met twice. This is right before I went out of town. So this nine hour conversation is occurring when I'm now like overseas traveling okay. and, um, you gotta listen to episode season two, episode one and two. Okay. But anyway, he, um, I, I read him the letter and he was like, that's exactly how I feel. And then the next day, like when I got up, I was just like, man, like, I think this is like the guy, like, I think I like need to be with this man. Mm -hmm. And my hesitation was, though he had, he had kids. And I was just like, Ooh, I don't know about all that. And so that was really like, Oh, like, I I think this is the guy, but like, I'm not down with all that. And then I don't know, I woke up the next day, granted at like three in the afternoon, because I've been up on the phone all night. And I was just like, yeah, this is it. Like, we should be together. And then he was like, we've been together. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, I think like, like the universe has like a sense of humor. Like it'll, it's like, I'm going to give you what you want, but you didn't say anything about this. And right. So like, it's like, it's like, it's testing you. It's like, and, are you and, going to fumble this opportunity because of something that you don't think that you are equipped to deal with? And yep. you are. Yep. Um, so yeah. And I just talked about that on yesterday's episode. The fact that like, I had this idea about what I thought it should look like. And anything outside of that, I either thought I can't handle, I don't want it because I can never handle it or it's just not for me. Like yeah. we have this way of, of like justifying things by like not justifying them. Yeah, by, it's, like, by not, just, you know, it's just not for me. I but why though? It's just not, it's just <laughs> never been, it just isn't. And it's like, you have to challenge your own ideas sometimes. Like just in the same way, I would challenge you on this podcast or anybody else who said something that I'm like, mm, what, what's the reason though? Yeah. Like you have to challenge yourself to be like, But why? Like, what's your reason? Like a fear of something happening that you don't know. So you're just going to sit here and dwell on this fear. But like, yeah, we just we got to challenge ourselves. Yeah, I completely agree. And I have friends like most of my friends um, are a little bit older than me. um, And I have some that are still single and they're just like, you know, he's got to have this, this, that. And he can't have kids and he has to make this much. And I'm just like. 
girl, like, how does he make you feel? And she's like, well, I just know, you know, and then they go, the guy that I serve, he's going to give me what I want and what I desire, you know, and I believe that too. But within reason, like, he can't build a man. You can't go to build a bear and just like pick pieces together. Um, and so I don't know. I think it's navigating it is so difficult, like mm-hmm. to figure out what am I willing, like what are my absolute no's and what could I be willing to if this is my guy. But I think like, even in a situation like that, where you're talking about your friend saying, well, I want somebody that's, you know, he does this, makes this, whatever. Like if that's what you focus on, you'll definitely get those things. I believe that. I believe if every day you say to yourself, like, God, just send me a man who, you know, makes 250 and above and is six foot. Like, I believe that that will happen. Right. But why are you not focusing on all the other things? Exactly. Like to me, the better prayer is God, please send me a man who is kind to me and like has ambition or whatever it is. But like, exactly. if you focus on, I don't like focusing on stuff that can change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff. you can lose your job. You can like, things can come and go in that way, but like who you are, like doesn't change. Like who you are at your inner core, like that's just there. Like yeah. I can't change that. I could help you get a different job. I could help you dress different, but like I can't help you learn ambition or like want more. I can't like help you be a kind hearted person and want to help people. Like yeah. I can't teach that. So like for me, I'm like focus on the things that you can't change or help. Like a person is who they are. Yeah. That's why I'm so big on like energy and chemistry is like, I, I just need you to feel good. I need you to you know. make me feel good. <laughs> what movie is yeah, that from again? I don't even know, but I've heard it before. <laughs> but it's like if if I don't, if I can't just be around you and do nothing and then you just feel good, like your energy just feels good. Like it just, I don't know. It's hard to explain out loud. I, I totally know what you mean. Like if that is important to me. And it's like if I just don't, we can't laugh together. Like that's so important to me. It's just like. I just need you to have fun, be, you know, you can be strict, but make me laugh. Um, and, there, you know, there's so many other things, but at the core of it for me is can we vibe together? Can we sit and do nothing? Can we be somewhere with the TV off, the, the power off, and just enjoy each other's time? Can we, like, say nothing to each other and still exist in the same space. Mm -hmm. Like that, those are the type of things that I think of when I'm like, okay, is it worth my time to continue this or not? Yeah. And that's the thing we, I think we just make it too complicated. We start focusing on the wrong things and it's, it's so simple. Like at the end of the day, I think when two people have like a shared energy and a vibe, like they can make almost anything happen. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like some of the greatest music is made by people who are like, we're in love. Let's sing about it. <laughs> and then it's like, damn, that's a hit. <laughs> and it's just like that energy, like it's, that's what you have to go for. I completely agree. So in case anybody that uh, is out there or is listening out there, that might be a good fit for you. Tell us again what this person needs to have. <laughs> <laughs> He just needs to be confident in himself. I, like, if you want to, well, first of all, I like a hunter. I don't like, like, in a sense that you see, you if I pique your interest, you're not afraid to come talk to me, um, approach me respectfully, let me know, you know, what your intentions are. If you don't know, like, just tell me, you know, I have plans. I want to take you out. Do you agree? I mean, will you agree? Um, so I like hunt. I like hunters in that. Same. So a slide into her DMs. No, I'm just going to translate for everybody. Yeah, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> I, I like to meet people in person. I get crazy in my DMs sometimes, and so I just ignore them. Um, but he has to be confident and a little, you know, nice swag. I like corny sometimes, too. You know, you can be either corny or have a little swag. Um, but essentially, like, for it to go anywhere, you have to have a relationship with God. Um, you have to... Um, I like family guys. I like. I come from a huge family, so it's really important to me um, for someone to understand what it's like um, when family is important. Um, you have to be a leader. You have to be ambitious. You have to be comfortable with a confident woman who is also very direct. I'm very direct um, in all situations, and I know that sometimes I've learned that that comes off as rude sometimes. So... Um, just kind of like let me know like because I've been alone for three years I've, well, I've been single for three years so I'm very kind of set in my ways at this point but I'm not 
um, I'm still open to learning. So if you get past the initial stages, like, let me know what I'm doing that is like your singleness is showing. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's just honestly, it's just you have to be genuine. Don't try to impress me. I can sense that right away. And it turns me off. Like, I I don't like that. Um, Just be yourself. Okay. It's that simple. And if be yourself, if I like you, I like you. And if I don't, then I don't like I'm not for everybody. You're not for everybody. So right. we're not going to try to force it. And that's just what it is. That's a good list. Yeah. So you heard it here. <laughs> if you're if you're single and looking, Haley might let you, you know, kind of talk for a little bit. But don't make her <laughs> bored and don't take her on dinner dates. <laughs> I know. I sound so difficult. Like, when I hear myself it doesn't loud, sound difficult. Like, it doesn't sound difficult. Okay. I don't think that's unreasonable. Cool. I don't think that's unreasonable. You basically want a confident man who knows who he is and is confident enough to be himself. Exactly. If I had to sum it up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so where can people reach out to you? Um, well, uh, I guess the easiest way, he found me on Facebook, um, but the easiest way, I guess, is, would be Instagram. Um, my handle is at Slaley Marie. Um, you can slide in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I usually respond. I try to respond to, I, re- I respond to all women, but sometimes I don't respond to guys. I'm <laughs> terrible. Um, but you can also email me, um, HS. M-A-R-I-E at Gmail, and I have a blog on the way. Um, I had told myself that it was going to be done by Q1. What's your blog about? Um, it's going to just be about things I think about. Um, it mixed with little, you know, lifestyle and fashion, but I plan to talk about, you know, um, just how... I think my blog is actually more about me um, and the things that I've learned on my journey um, over these last three years, just being confident, learning, you know, who you are, how to, you know deal with the lows because I feel like we live in a very highlight um, Mm -hmm. highlight centric universe where everybody just wants to broadcast the good things about themselves and that's not that's you can have toxic positivity well thank you for coming on tonight and sharing your lessons and your story definitely thank you for having me yes and lesson of the day is don't think those red flags aren't red they're 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 red they're not pink they're not white they're red look at them run (laughs) (laughs) well thank you guys so much for listening tonight and please reach out to me at tanisha wood on instagram facebook and twitter and let me know what you think of tonight's show and until next time wish me love Hello again, my lovely listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of DRL. If you like the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review. And don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL. Thank you so much for supporting. <music>